Welcome to my channel. My name is Charlie and I like to show you real raw travel instead of a glorified Instagram version. Come to Iceland, they said. It'd be fun, they said. And this is the second film in a two-part series where I'm going to be spending a week exploring some of Iceland's top tourist spots in and around the capital city of Reykjavik. Are you a little bit soggy, Megan? This is not what I expected at all. We might have got our waterfalls a little bit mixed up. This is Gogafoss, which is a bit treacherous here as well. So something that's not really going to come across on film is how stinky that is. Some serious bubbling going on there. We're going in there. It's going to be about two degrees. Previously, we had flown over to Iceland, rented a car and spent three days exploring the landscapes near Reykjavik. I kind of underestimated how cold it was going to be. But look at how stunning this is! Iceland is kicking ass so far! We had adventured around various sites in the Golden Circle. Oh my god! Okay, well, this is spectacular. And had attempted to deal with the extremely unpredictable Icelandic weather. <laughs> this is hilarious. Yeah. They're like huddling from the snow. And finally, we checked out the famous Blue Lagoon. However, if you're already familiar with my channel, then this film is going to be a little different from my usual backpacking adventures because... This time, I'm going with my family. Wah! Yep. This is not a backpacking trip, this is a family holiday. Parents are coming up slowly. They move at the speed of a glacier when they're this old. So, this is my mum. What's that furry bit? What's that, <laughs> What's that furry bit? Oh my god. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun <laughs> vlogging with you. This is my dad. <laughs> are you enjoying this, dad? <laughs> oh, I've never had so much fun. And this is my brother, Henry. <laughs> Soggy faces. I also want to introduce Megan, Henry's girlfriend at the time, and the reason that we were in Iceland in the first place, as she had been out there for a few weeks filming the orcas. Also, there's one thing I need to explain if you haven't seen part one. My brother is a professional cameraman, <laughs> and he has brought out his steady cam rig. He's getting some seriously good shots here. Basically, it's not really going to slot into my footage because it's going to be like, wow, Charlie suddenly got good at using a camera. Anyway, now you're up to speed, let's get on with the story. It's day four of our adventures. We're over halfway through our whole trip in Iceland because we're only here for a week. We are about an hour and a half into our adventure. We're heading to Vík. Um, and we're gonna go to the massive waterfall, the like big famous one that everyone does there. So we just have a little pit stop. We've got about another hour and 15 minutes to go, I think. So everyone's grabbing their camera equipment. Dad is grabbing a sandwich, so I'm kitted up in my full waterproofs, ready to tackle this bad boy. This one is called Skogafoss. Wrong! It's actually this one, which I'm not going to try and pronounce, so anyway, where were we? Yes. Off we go. Let's go tackle the waterfall. Quick, 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 the raiders come in. <laughs> this is pretty spectacular. So what we're going to do in a minute is go up and walk around, around the back. Hence why I'm in my full waterproofs apparently you get soaked. My brother is walking around steady camming it, getting some nice shots, so I'll maybe insert one of his nice shots about now. Looking good. It's obviously not going to be as good as this one. Since we knew we were about to get wet, we took our cameras back to the car and switched to the GoPro. Oh, this is a nice shot. Good job, this thing's waterproof. 
this walk behind the waterfall you need full waterproofs on look how drenched i am this is absolutely ridiculous which is a bit treacherous here as well we might have got our waterfalls a little bit mixed up that one we were just at wasn't Skogafoss. we're now going to Skogafoss, which is just down the road about five six minutes so, but you can't walk behind this one so the other one was kind of cooler i think that might be one of my favorite waterfalls just because you can walk all the way around the back and get completely soaked as if we've got our waterfalls uh, mixed up talk about that for parking spot oh that's the right waterfall that's where we gotta go this one is the biggest one in iceland oops well it's not the biggest one that's a lie it's the most famous one though isn't it oh look and you're not allowed drones what's your view on the waterfall dad <laughs> another day another waterfall <laughs> i don't think he's that impressed <laughs> i love it that we've got a ton of steady cam footage of the other one yeah we've got no steady cam footage of the big waterfall we'd like to get one of this there's a lot of people in the way though what are you doing Blocking out all That's the people. Amazing. It looks like Does a painting and doing yeah. an epic shot. It's like photoshopping out all the people with Henry. <laughs> Real life, Photoshop. I think we're going to get a little bit soggy if we get any closer with this camera, so I think it might be switched to GoPro time. This is Gogafoss. We're going up. <sighs> Dying a bit. How are you feeling, Henry? Fresh as a daisy. We made it. There's always stairs. The walking up of these stairs was a little bit of a mission, but totally worth it at the top. At least we got the right waterfall this time. We are awake. You're awake. Is mum awake? It's trying to have a bit of R and R. Now we come back with cameras. <laughs> what we tend to do is leave the parents in the car sometimes. They weren't gonna walk up all those steps. They are OAPs after all. <laughs> It's not raining, Dad. It's safe to step out of the car. It's safe to venture out. Tea break. I don't think I've ever seen a Star Wars film. Here you have. You've got Return of the Jedi on VHS. <laughs> on VHS. Yeah. Next stop, Black Beach. We're getting really soggy. <laughs> You're not enjoying yourself, are you, Dad? No, it's a bit soggy. Fun. It is a bit soggy. A bit soggy. As you can see by the lens that's covered in water, it's really kind of dreary and dismal. But this black beach is really cool. So I'm going to try and get some shots to show you.
Look at this. It's very good. Cool. Look at it. How so it's a natural. I mean, I'm getting dripped on, but look at it. This is great. Quick, the sun's coming out. Tiny bit of sun. So as you can see, the waves are super dangerous here. There's a sign at the beginning of the, the beach up there. It's like they're suddenly just upon you and just take you out. It's pretty spectacular, but you really need to watch out for these waves. Danger, danger. This is the deadly sneaker wave, ordinary wave, sneaker wave. Someone just got completely taken out. Totally missed it on film because I was time lapsing, but and this is exactly what happened to that woman. It was ridiculous. They got knocked off their feet and they dragged out to sea. And there's loads of people playing roulette, running down as far as they can, standing there waiting and then being like, ah, and then running all the way back again. Because they're crazy. Henry is now steady coming over there, getting some nice shots. journey home we decided it was time to pack up and start driving on our way back we drove past the car park that you stop in if you want to see the famous plane wreck but since it's a four kilometer walk there and back we decided that we didn't really have time so I'll just have to add it to my list for my next trip in Iceland it's pretty much the same as Australia, as in they sell alcohol in a separate store to the supermarket. So this one is the alcohol shop. Is it the only alcohol shop, did they say? No, there's something else. There's one more, there's one other brand as well. What sort of beer do you want? Some of those. Yeah, so that must be. 100 less in the duty free. And since I failed to give you a tour of our Airbnb in part one, let me put my lunch away and I'll show you around. This is the kitchen. It goes through to a nice little living room area. And there's another living room area here. This is the bathroom. I love doing that every time. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. This is Henry and Megan's room. And this is my bedroom. There's a I like little conservatory. It's nice garden. See, it's quite a nice little place actually. It's really cozy. And then this is an interesting one. It said it was built, it had a hot tub. However, I think hot tub is a little bit of a loose term because what it really is, is a bathtub outside. <laughs> it basically takes about an hour to fill up. No, Henry just locked me out. Wee. Henry. They're so mean. Henry locked me out. Finally, the outside bath was full, so we sat and had a G and T. Oh my gosh, on my squeeze. Day four. Lava tunnels. We're going exploring. Underground. Oh, we have to put a helmet on, don't we? And when you come in later, I'm gonna give you the spikes. Oh my god, this is serious. Mm. Serious caving, hey? We need spikes on our shoes. Again, I'm not really sure what I've signed up to. So I might have chosen the wrong hat. We have to wear a helmet. I've got a bubble on mine. I don't wanna go into too many details. 
because it's boring sometimes. <laughs> so last but not least, uh, we are trying to protect the nature of your as supposed to break anything, take away anything from the cave or leave Oh, we're going. I don't think I'm going to be able to turn my light on. Here we go. I managed to get my light on. We're going in. We go. We're going deeper. Going deeper underground. Don't worry, Jamaica. Why am I behind Megan? She's gonna take me out. <laughs> ah. You're coming with me. <laughs> it's like if you're falling, I'm falling too. Interesting fact for you. Apparently, there's a scene filmed in here in Noah's Ark. I've never seen it, so I'm gonna look it up, and if I find it. Drop it in. Dad's got his resting panic face on. Firstly, we're going into the dark now. There's no natural light. Secondly, we're going across iPhone graveyard, apparently. Everyone drops their phones on this bridge. I'm having to cover my light because it's messing up my camera. This is not what I expected at all. This is amazing. Look how stunning it is. Right, I've worked out how to turn the light off. This is so stunning. It's like crystals or something. Back that way. Oh, can't get enough of this. This is what we're gonna do. We are going to turn off our lights and the light system in the cave. If you are fine with that, we're about to turn all the lights off yeah. to get a true <laughs> darkness. And, uh, Long time, yeah. Here we so go. Sure everyone is ready? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, that's pretty black. After a few minutes, you will realize that it doesn't matter if you have your eyes open or closed. <laughs> the thing with ultimate darkness is that uh, it won't get better. <laughs> it won't get better. <laughs> <laughs> ultimate darkness. Uh, your eyes cannot adjust. They need some at least one photon to adjust to the darkness. It doesn't matter how many days uh, or weeks you will spend here, or it will be still no different. Your brain is trying to see something because it has eyes. After a few days, you can uh, get some hallucinations. And after a few weeks, the brain will shut your eyes off. It would like to save the energy. Eyes are useless. That's what we call hate blindness. Because if you need to spend here a month or so, you will probably lose your mind first. <laughs> I will definitely go mad. I'm already going I'm mad. I <laughs> spent here like more than uh, one hour. Before we put all those artificial lights, we were using only headlamps. And now I promise that I will show you bacteria. So all those white spots are bacterial colonies. And it looks like Bacteria is reflecting my light because uh, it's hydrophobic, so it repels water, and those water drops into reflection. So today's plan is basically going on an adventure, a random off-piste adventure. First of all, we went to the caves, which was amazing. Um, that was a completely unplanned activity, and we just kind of found it and booked it this morning. And now we are just going completely off-piste, and Henry is taking us on like a little tour into the wilderness. Where is this point of interest you're taking us to? Well, somebody uploaded a photo on Google Maps. <laughs> and so we're now we're going now blindly going to that spot. <laughs> um, a little bit off piece track. A little bit off piece. Um, 
their green circle tours. Uh, which is a slight variation, you know, a bit of scenery, a bit of lava. <laughs> a bit of lava, um, slight variation on the traditional yeah. golden circle tour. Exactly. The good thing is you make it up as you go along. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so we're coming up to what is supposed to be the point of interest on our winging it tour. Apparently uh, it's a picnic table. And it looks like a bench. Great. It's a picnic bench. Nah, just jokes. Look at this. There's a whole cave. You don't see me in five minutes. Uh. Go and eat more sandwiches. Yes. So I say, we're not going to do very much. We'll just leave you down there. Okay, we're going down. I'm always having to do this, holding a camera, and it's like way harder. like I'm gonna slip and die. This is the dodgy bit. Let's try and create some steps, shall we? Giant step for me and Colin. <laughs> Stop messing about with your camera. Oh, actually Megan's properly caving down there. What's it like down there, kids? Pitch black. It's literally pitch black. You can't see anything. Okay, so a biscuit. I'm eating a biscuit. <laughs> so, what's the next stop on the uh, Henry Green Circle tours? This place. This place. Where Where are we? What is steamy? Steamy. Seltun. Henry's, Henry's Green Circle Maxim. tours are pretty Maxim. awesome. We get great information, really accurate. We know exactly what's going on. We know where we are all the time. <laughs> Danger, steam, eruption. Stay on trail. Oh, what was that, Mum? Not get off, or you might get boiled. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at that. That's cool, isn't it? Look at that. It's boiling. So something that's not really going to come across on film is how stinky that is. It smells like eggs. Eggs, eggs, eggs. Whew. That's sulfur. It's potent. Remember I told you about that place where you can do the hours hike and then if you go into the valley, yeah. then all the rivers merge with the geothermal hot springs and create lots of tiny pockets of hot tubs all the way down the valley. Ah, oh, okay. Get in, in yeah. yeah. I so see. Well, this is the start of the walk. Yeah. Here, being downwind of this. Henry's risking it for a biscuit over there. It is hissing away. Look at that. It's insane. That's pretty awesome. Some serious bubbling going on there. The thing is, if you come to Iceland for just like three or four days, which to be honest is what most people do, like come for a long weekend or whatever, you only really have time to just do those main spots. Whereas if you come for like a week or you're even going for longer and you're actually driving the main circle road around the whole place, then you actually get to see some of the less touristy spots and come to some of those little hidden ones like this. Definitely if you come to Iceland, go off the beaten track a little bit. There's loads of cool little points of interest marked on the maps and like today where we've been into a cave on a guided tour then we found our own cave just randomly and now we're at these kind of geothermal hot springs and it's all like not the most popular places to go you know it's not the main waterfalls and it's not the main golden circle kind of route but definitely recommend it if you're coming for a few more days get yourself a car go on an adventure Go off-piste. Love a bit of off-piste. 
Since it was getting late, we decided to head home, as that night we were going to be heading into town for some dinner and drinks. Good? I'm good, oh, this is what I do. <laughs> yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Oh, that's so cute, the guy was offering to hold my camera. And that's how Iceland roll. <laughs> They're so polite. We have come to the Big Lebowski bar, because why not? <laughs> we've got people waving in here as well, this is amazing. So we've come here to have a white Russian. I'm going to show you around, because it's pretty cool. Oh, is it alcoholic Nesquik? Oh, that is a good mark question. Hell yeah. <laughs> day in Iceland. Day six. But we have an epic activity to do this afternoon. Just you wait, it's gonna be cool. Literally, it's gonna be freezing. I'm a little bit scared. Okay. Ready, one, two, three, jump. I think you got it. That's some serious resting panic phase in this one. Oh no, resting panic phase. <laughs> So a travel tip for coming to Reykjavik is everything kind of opens at 11, like all the cafes, all the shops. It's really late compared to the UK. But the supermarkets don't open until 10 as well. So you have to kind of be very organized and prepared. You can't just kind of pop out and go and grab your breakfast. We are heading to the cat cafe. Let's go drink hot chocolate and pet the cats, yay. There's a cat. Oh, you're so affectionate. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, hello, cutie. Ow. <laughs> As you've already seen, the trip had been pretty hectic up to this point, so it was just nice to chill out, eat a cupcake, and mentally prepare ourselves for the next activity. Okay, so, you know I said earlier, we've got a really cool activity we're going to do today. We're going in there. It's going to be about two degrees. We are going to freeze. So we're about to go and get kitted up in wetsuits. No, not wetsuits, dry suits. What am I talking about? Are you crazy? And then we are going swimming between the plates. Oh my god. This is literally the most random thing. You just kind of come to a car park and put on a dry suit. And then we just walk across the road over there and just get in. Crazy. Did you see the signpost over there? That it had the guy crossing the road, but he was wearing like flippers and a snorkel. Uh, I was crossing. Megan? Yes. That's you. And then we have Charlotte? Yep. And Henry. So here's the liability form. Yep. It's basically that you know what you're going to do. Get really, really cold. You're going to follow our instructions. <laughs> Yeah. We're gonna have a lot of fun. <laughs> and we need to have an emergency contact. Please do not know. Put it here. No. <laughs> then we met Clarence, who was gonna be our guide for the day, and more importantly, help us get into these dry suits. Once you're in the undergarment, just put your shoes back on because you're gonna come back out to get dressed into the dry suit itself. Okay. As I said before, you wanna use the washroom before you get into this. <laughs> I can't breathe on this thing. <laughs> so we're in layer one. If you're gonna do this, you want to bring thermals for both your top and bottom, and then you get into your dry suit. Here we go. This is gonna be really cool. So this is your suit. Off he goes. This is so heavy. <laughs> Good luck, Charles. Montage of getting into the suit. I've got one leg in. And there they all are. I'm not going to lie, I don't know how I'm actually going to get into this. Super suit, ready to go. <laughs> this is like a mini drama all in itself. I know, I can't get into this. This is the second attempt anyway. Do you want to join Dad? 
I'm gonna come, come and jump I in the water. I got to the yeah. age where I'd ask how many medical certificates. <laughs> They wouldn't accept me. Oh, that's a cut off the blood circulation. <laughs> You're in. Oh, this, this is not very comfortable. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> it's always good when your dad turns around to you and says, You've got to be a standard type right, person guys. to do this. So basically, the hardest part of the day is actually getting into the dry suits. Okay. Once you're in you. the water, it's going to be much more relaxing, I promise. <laughs> there is a current running down so far, so there's no need to kick really fast. Okay. The first part is called the big crack. It is a little bit narrow at the start, so we'll try to go in a single section. And then right after that section is what we call the cathedral. This is the deepest part of the tour. It is about 18 meters on the bottom. You'll be able to see all the way down from the top. You don't need to be a scuba diver to experience so far from the surface. You'll be able to see all the way down. The visibility in so far is at least 100 meters. As you can probably see, I'm feeling warm and a bit restricted. There's a lack of movement going on here. I've got no neck. Downward facing dog is a bit of a no. Yes, Unfortunately, it doesn't restrict that. I wish it did. Very amazing. <laughs> but I'm still a bit apprehensive about how cold this is gonna be. And you're officially in. Oh, we're in. <laughs> we're in. <laughs> we made it. I can't hit anything. I'm deaf.
fault line goes right through the middle of Iceland, which is what causes so much volcanic activity. So right now, we are swimming between those two plates. Something else. Thank you very much. How was it? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, that's good. Got some cool videos. Yeah, I hope so. So one thing I would say about this is you know when you have like the expectation versus reality and you look up pictures and you're like wow that looks amazing and then you get there and it's like this totally the opposite it is exactly how it looks on Google oh, totally blew my mind and it is exactly what you expect I know there's a lot of hype around Iceland but in my opinion it totally lives up to it Over the past six days, we had seen the most stunning landscapes, spectacular waterfalls, lava caves, lagoons, and even beaches. Everything in this country is just on another level, and that even includes the weather. There were definitely things we didn't get to see, as not only had we based ourselves in one place, but also it was a family holiday so we had to compromise on a schedule that would suit everyone. However, getting to swim between the tectonic plates on that last day had just been the perfect ending to a truly magical trip. And as we were flying home, I didn't feel sad to leave, as I knew someday I'd be back, and hopefully next time I might even get to see the whales for myself. for watching guys and if you enjoyed this film and you want to support my channel then it really helps me out if you just remember to hit that like button share it with a friend that you think might enjoy it and drop me a comment telling me what your favorite part was and make sure you're subscribed hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next film which is going to be the pocket trailblazer christmas special <laughs>